Yeah, that's right. It's Hindar. Welcome back, everybody. Good evening and welcome to another episode of D&D brought to you by Battle Cry or Die. David, I was thinking we could plug um, Crawl Daddy Prince in, uh, in our stream sometimes. We could, but they're not ready for that yet. <laughs> Yeah, they're not ready for that uh, influx of. Uh... No, I'm just making a joke. I wanted I wanted you to see it because um, I made some slight changes. Oh, sweet. All right, cool. Well, um, thank you, everybody who has joined us, uh, viewers. We have um, uh, another T viewer and lurks. Uh, so thank you guys for jumping in to watch our stream this evening. I am the DM. Um, so, um, for, for those of you watching the stream, we're going through Horde of the Dragon Queen, uh, a 5e, a D&D 5e module, and uh, our party has made it to Waterdeep. Uh, last time we left off, um, the party had undergone an arrest and were escorted into the city. Um, but instead of ta being taken to a jailhouse of sorts, uh, they instead were were taken to uh, an, another building, uh, a little more secretive, um, led in to meet with High Lady Solaria, who is one of the leaders of the Harpers, uh, and actively working alongside the Gauntlet to uh, uh, aid in stopping or um you know ruining the plans of the dragon cult in uh, uh, in their endeavors uh, <clears throat> so uh, our party is a little split right now um, two of them uh, one automaton and our rogue are in the basement working with uh, one Ulfni Colborn, a gnome tinkerer 
uh, who has implemented some clockwork machinations into our campaign. And the the others are uh, upstairs uh, conferring with uh, the High Lady. And so that's kind of where we left off. Cool. I hope everybody's had a good week. Welcome to Friday night, the first evening of the weekend. Super exciting. Yes. I'm prepared for prison. I got my <laughs> soap on a rope and everything. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> why, why would you want the soap on a rope? Because why, why would you do that? You don't want to drop the soap. Well, yes, of course you wouldn't want to drop it. You'd have to bend over and pick it up. I, mean, I got that, but I mean, of course you also need to clean yourself and you don't want it to get dirty by touching the ground. I don't understand what other reason. <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. That's I it. mean, the first that reason, all. <laughs> the only reason is soap. It's not really going to get that dirty, but the first reason is, true. is the reason. Bending over, right. you must have a bad back. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Totally got a bag back. <laughs> okay. Where's they can fix that? Especially in that's prison. Because of the first oh. time I got the soap, so I mean. <laughs> The, the reason so who's first time? Roland's first time? <laughs> well, saying you no, got a I... bad back is the first time you drop the soap. So. No, 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 no. <laughs> they, can, they can fix your back in prison. I've heard they do good chiropractic work in prison. No. They can make you a salad in prison. They can fix your back. I have heard that. I've heard. I've heard things of salads. Yes. <laughs> This is already going terrible. Please also, I'm thinking about a Sanchez, but I'm not sure exactly how that works. <sighs> And a certain oh, kind of sandwich. Let's not go down. Let's not go of... down. Let's... Okay. <laughs> for, those of you, for those of you watching the stream, I greatly apologize for the conduct <laughs> of our party. I do not apologize. As a matter of fact, I take his apology back. You should know better by now. <laughs> I half apologize. Yeah, I completely uh, agree. I, I, I apologize if you are offended. <laughs> we need to put a, a an adult content it warning at the beginning of our videos. <laughs> I think we already do, don't we? Yeah, there's a you have to click. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> okay, there you go. Cool, F <laughs> fancy that. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, so thinking about uh, soap not not being able to get dirty. Uh, quick question, rhetorical question for everyone out there. Who sanitizes the handles of sanitizer bottles? Just to throwing that out there. Uh, anyways. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're using the sanitizer the second after you touch it, you're going to be using, you're going to be wiping your hands off anyway. But I get your point. <laughs> right. Speaking of sanitizing, did Olfany sanitize his hands before grubbing my body up with his human hands? Not only did he not sanitize his hands, he has been coughing all over you. Oh, <laughs> uh, good. Maybe I'll sneeze on him. Aww. Oh, inside joke. <laughs> <laughs> did he at least lube up before he went inside? Okay, we got to actually get on to the actual <laughs> game. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. Everything cannot be <laughs> this. <laughs> Any window. <laughs> Oh okay. my god, it's never going to end. I'm just trying to move the game along, that's all. <laughs> okay. uh, so, uh, Roland and Ulfney, uh, uh as, as, as Ulfney has been working, Roland, so he has pointed out to you a couple of books uh, regarding alchemy that had some uh, titles to them that weren't necessarily specific to alchemy, uh, but definitely uh, whose contents uh, retained some uh, alchemy information. So if you don't mind making an intelligence roll for me, sir, okay. and um, we'll First see what you gain from that. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we shall see how that goes. Um, okay, there we go. That's not terrible. Not bad, Sorry. not bad. Okay. Um, cool. So as you're looking through, um, you actually find uh, ingredients for... Uh, uh, or some uses for uh, serpent venom. Mm -hmm. Mm 
and it described in detail the harvesting of serpent venom. Um, it must be harvested from a dead or incapacitated uh, giant poisonous snake. Oh. It requires a DC 11 constitution saving throw and deals 3d6 on a failed save or half as much on a successful save. Hmm. Okay. Um, so Atlas is old. The... Oh. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Roland. What's the, I was going to ask, is there a street value for that? Uh, in case someone wanted to sell it. Street value. Uh, no street value listed. Okay. All right. Ounce of server room. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Um, so Atlas, uh, you've been thoroughly inspected by Ulfney Colborn. Um, and just to kind of set the, uh, the theme or area for, uh, the rest of you or anybody who's watching. Um, so they've made their way through, through water deep or, or had been escorted rather through water deep into one particular, uh, area on the corner of two streets in the, um, uh, in the castle ward section of Waterdeep. So they're kind of on the northwestern block or towards the northwestern block uh, of the castle ward. Okay. And uh, they've, they've been led down an alleyway into uh, through an entryway uh, in the alleyway into a basement. Now this is two of the characters, the rogue and the automaton um, who's uh, playing an artificer. Um, and in this basement, there is uh, a little workshop. You know, there are cool, damp walls uh, with flickering orange light across them. Uh, there are multiple bookshelves along the left wall filled with uh, books of, of many varying uh, informations. Um, there on the right hand side, there is a table uh, with some hooded lanterns with uh, various arms connected to uh, to around the edges of the table um, with uh, various tinkering tools uh, utilized by this gnomish tinkerer, Ulfney Colborn, uh, someone who is a bit eccentric, a little articulate, and uh, has some strange notions. Um, so um, <clears throat> as he uh, has thoroughly inspected you, Atlas. He's he's made you aware of quite a few of the, the varying functions of your body. Uh, one specific thing that, that definitely sticks out is um, underneath the uh, plate of your chest, uh, there is another separate keyhole that is different than the other keyholes uh, in the varying locations of your body. Um, he mentions to you um, that this specific keyhole is utilized by the key um, that is is currently possessed by the buyer. Um, and what the key does is uh, he, he ex explains or expresses to you that the key's function is if put into that keyhole and turned, um, will uh, essentially, or it, its intention was to animate your autonomous body and um, subjectify you to the key holder. Um, so in other words, he, he explains to you that if, if this person had inserted the key and turned it, you immediately would become subject to an animated for the buyer. Um, and so he mentions that that, he mentions that information to you, um, and he says that the buyer currently holds or is in possession of that key as far as he knows. So essentially, um, it would make me subservient to right. the buyer. Okay. Right. Um, and so that's something that he expresses to you. Uh, uh, Go I was, ahead. I was going to ask him: uh, Is that was that with the knowledge of someone's soul being in the body? Like, does that override his own intentions as Atlas, or would it be something where, like, the automaton would have been just a blank slate? Because I guess I'm just trying to understand. I, I guess he wouldn't know because he didn't yeah. expect this kind of circumstance. But given yeah, the fact he... that he wills control over it now, if he puts the key, I, this is just me thinking out loud, I guess, because I don't know if I'll, <laughs> I'll be, know this. 
Uh, so Ulfni expresses to you that the intention was never to have a soul connected to this particular body. Um, mm -hmm. And he feels that some of the crystalline or, or cr crystalline magics that are happening um, perhaps have a couple of elements in them uh, that were unintended um, that have caused the, the connection to take place. Okay. Is there any way to remove the keyhole or seal the keyhole so that the key doesn't work anymore? Uh, so he mentions that um, the keyhole is magically connected to the crystal that is powering his body. And so it would take a significant amount of uh, 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 experimentation, um, almost um, he, the way that he explains it, it's almost as if it were a surgical removal um, that has uh, a lot of probability of going wrong. I took cement and filled the hole with cement. <laughs> would that stop it from being usable? If cement's a thing in this <laughs> universe. Would, would my character know what sovereign glue is? Um, let's see. He's going to an intelligence check. Okay, thank you. Yeah, make an intelligence check. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you would have a really good idea. Then I'll just suggest that. If I if I know what, you know, sovereign glue is, Ulfni, is that it's an unbreakable material that, or at least virtually unbreakable. Um, you know, do you just happen to have any of that lying around? He says no, that he does not. He does not, in fact. Can we stuff it with paper? <laughs> something like the key won't just it has to actually go in and like turn right it can't well i mean like probably, if, if we put anything there if they can capture me and force it to use it on me anyway then i mean they're just gonna really and truly the lock being there is just for somebody who is polite and if they're gonna capture me and force it anyway then that's just what they're gonna do I want to make it difficult for him, you know, like if it's going to take him hours to get it out, then we have hours to potentially stop this from happening. So he mentions, he, he mentions that it, it, it definitely would slow somebody down. Uh, if you were to take some steps, some preventative measures, if you could, um, it, it could very well s slow somebody down to the point of, you know, taking an excessive amount of time to get into it. Uh, mm -hmm. If we that were something over it, like a sheet of metal over it. This is just a thought. Just ignore it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't. I don't like the idea of uh, anyone, especially a ally of mine, being forced into slavery. Essentially, that really doesn't sit well with me at all um he mentions that um obviously he never intended for it to be something that could be categorized as slavery uh, well just in this particular context given that he has a will of his own right now atlas and he says yes he he says that it definitely raises some interesting circumstances. Um, well, I, I mean, I, I'm fine with us taking preventative measures and everything. I, um, that would be cool, but Roland, you wouldn't let me get in harm's way anyway, would you, buddy? Define harm's way, friend. Uh, we fight a lot of, you know. Cat to me, right? Oh, no, of course not. Well, I mean, if we had already dis discussed a plan in which you being captured was part of the ploy, then sure, but I would probably let you know that ahead of time. I wouldn't just let yeah. you be captured out of, out of the blue, no. But then again, I'm not always around you, so 
we'll see. I, I don't know. It's just very. I don't. I don't like the uncertainty of this. Well, Thane, I was actually going to ask. Um, since you designed this body, is there is there any way that I can make my physical attacks more strong, like with my fists and everything? You see, I don't know if you talk to my parents or not. They don't know that I'm a boxer, and I'd appreciate it, you know, if you didn't tell them. But um, but that's what I do uh, in secret uh, behind their backs is I box and stuff. So I was wondering if there's a way to make my my attacks with my fists any stronger by some means or measures. Um, and he he looks and he holds up a, a, a finger as if um, a light bulb has dinged or he's recalled, had some form of recall. Um, and he stands up and walks back over to the bookshelves uh, and begins looking through the, the variations of spines uh, of books and scrolls and things. He's digging for something specifically. Um, okay, so uh, Kidrin, Skadrick, and Ricard, um, each of you have made your way. Uh, you were led in through the front door of this particular building, being led in by somebody um, of high stature, high class society, or you know potentially someone of, of noble blood or royal blood or something. Um, uh, they've uh, let you into this building, uh, noting that the, the building is you know multiple stories high, um, and that there being windows, you know, illuminated windows uh, on each each floor of the building or whatever, you're led up to the second floor uh, where you entered into this room that was uh, dark with this strange kind of mist-like uh, substance float hanging in the air. Uh, and you also noted that there were not, in fact, any windows on the inside uh, of the building, seemingly. Um, almost as if the outside was presenting some sort of illusion so as to uh, deceive passers-by. Um, so uh, you're greeted by a uh, High Lady Solaria sitting at this large round table uh, next to uh, five of her colleagues, um, four of which she names to you guys, uh, Zinner Sarkin, uh, Jintar Dante, Hindar Gaston, and Estein Marika, mentioning that each of them have functioned in some form or fashion to aid the harbors uh, and um, also on behalf of, you know, uh, taking political measures to try and uh, thwart the plans of the Cult of the Dragon. Um, she's mentioned to you that they have a significant amount of details um, in regards to some of the events that have taken place. Uh, and you you guys went through a little bit of that uh, in uh, and in during that discussion, um, it was brought up the this topic of uh, disciplinary action towards you guys for um, the uh, some of the destruction that had taken place previously. Um, now, Ricard, sitting there, um, uh, you uh, spoke up and kind of said, hey, um, these were decisions that I had made, or most of these decisions were my own, um, punish me, and not so much the party. Um, and I believe that that's the second time that you mentioned something of that sort. Um, correct. The, I believe the first time was actually out in the field as the arrest was taking place. Uh, and, and yes, that was directly to the, the arresting member of the guard and the, the high lady herself. Right. I believe with the two in earshot. Right. Um, so she sits across from you and she's, she's looking thoughtfully, um, and um, she says, you know, given given the the uh, circumstances to to remain on a diplomatic level with uh, with everyone to to present a specific image, um, she says that there are certain steps that she needs to take, but not to fear um, that they would be resolved. Um, 
she said, um, there is a council of people that are meeting. She expresses to you, um, uh, or to, to uh, the, the three of you uh, sitting there. Uh, by the way, for those watching the stream, one of our characters is missing this evening. Uh, that is uh, Kidron, who is our paladin. Um, anyway, so uh, she mentions to the three of you, um, in, in the meantime, uh, there are a few things that uh, she feels that y'all should know. Um, and as the the council is meeting, she says uh, she, she wants to express these things to you guys, uh, inform you of some of the things that uh, she would like for you to participate in or, or be involved in. Um, and she's going to present those things to the council as well as some of the aid that you guys have provided in bringing the Harper's information about the Cult of the Dragon. Um, and says that she wants to go and present that to the council that's meeting uh, on your behalf uh, and perhaps reduce some of the disciplinary action that uh, was being rumored uh, from some of the politicians to being taken. Um, so um, she then begins to uh, detail out for you guys uh, some of the pieces of information that she's gained. Um, so she, she mentions to you uh, that they've gotten word about uh, the Mirror of Dead Men. Uh, she, which you guys have already learned some of, um, and uh, it, it's further north uh, from Waterdeep. And she mentions to you guys that um, that in the Mirror of Dead Men, there there is. Da, 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 da. Let me pull up my notes real quick. Um. There is a fortified roadhouse uh, that has once served merchants and teamsters, but now feeds laborers and safeguards uh, road building supplies uh, and also aids the cult of the dragon in smuggling its treasure. Uh, she mentions that this is one of the large points uh, that the cult of the dragon is using to smuggle, uh, smuggle its treasure through. So uh, she mentions that um, she's learned that there was a party of Cult of the Dragon traveling from Baragost northward uh, and at some point had, you know, infiltrated and been a part of the traveling convoy of merchants, um, but also that there were a few people captured uh, during that travel. Um, she she mentions that they learned that there was a contingency of soldiers uh, that had come uh, to investigate or inspect the attack on Bear Ghost, and a lot of them were killed and some of them were taken taken captive. Um, she says that they're working on trying to figure out uh, the information about those uh, peoples uh, and. Uh, she she mentions that um, a lot of this information is uh, largely uh, has largely come from uh, Trollum, who she she then mentions uh, that she had gotten word that Trollum was afraid that you guys might have begun to distrust her some, uh, and wanted to reassure you that that. You know, in, in spite of what things may have looked like, that she was trustworthy. And so she expresses that to you. Um, so uh, what the High Lady requests of you is that you guys, once this whole council meeting takes place and disciplinary action is decided, um, she's hoping that she can uh, at least stave off for a time any of that action um, so as to divert you guys so that you can kind of work towards some of the goals of the Harpers in continuing the thwart 
or find out more information about uh, the Cult of the Dragon and, and their dealings. Uh, and so she mentions that to you guys. Um, so um, <clears throat> going back to Atlas and Roland, um, so as you guys are standing down in the basement, you know, Ultney has turned and has been moving through these books for a while. Da, 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 da. And he turns around and he's like, no, no, no. I, I was sure that I had this little book somewhere down here and I can't seem to find it. Uh, forgive me, sir, but I think that I will... Uh, let let me try again. I think I'm going to try again. And, what, and, uh, uh, w what's the book look like? Yeah, maybe I can help you find it. Yeah. And he says, um, well, it's it's uh, le le leather bound straw. Uh, it's it's not very thick, but it's a little thick. It contains some of my notes and things about the various experimentations that I had tried to perform uh, previously. And I think that if we found it, it would aid me. Uh, there were a couple of additions that I was going to make on the body before shipping it, but the 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 buyer became quite um, insistent that I sent it the way that it was. Um, I, I mentioned that it, uh, as far as as uh, uh, actions of servitude, the, it was completed, but it could still use some work and some uh, the defensive or the more defensive uh, territories. Um, and he says, um, um, so I think that uh, uh, <clears throat> brown, uh, it's a brown leather bag uh, full of parchment, uh, containing some of my notes. Uh, it's a little bit taller than normal books, but go ahead, Roland. I was just going to say, is there any writing on it at all? Is it just a brown book? Leather brown? Oh, there's nothing written on the spine, if that's what you mean. And when's the last time you actually used it? In my other shop. In your other shop? If I remember cor correctly, yes, it was in my other shop. Okay. Uh, can I look at, at the shelves? Like, are there, is there dust on the shelves? Um, yeah, you make an investigation check, uh, but you I'm, definitely see some layers of dust here. I'm trying to see which if there's any, like, disturbance in any of the dust near any brown leather books. To okay. See if maybe... Okay, so that's just a straight yeah, investigation. Yeah, make an investigation check. Yeah, sure. Oh, Go for it. <laughs> oh, God. I'm getting a bad feeling about later today. Um, so there, there is, you know, quite a bit of uh, uh, caking of dust on, you know, various parts of the, the bookshelves here. Um, there are a couple of areas, though, that you note on the bookshelf. Uh, that appeared to have been disturbed not that long ago, it seems, um, where where dust is caked across the rest of the bookshelf. You know, you, you do see a couple of spots where it seems a few books have been pulled uh, pulled out, perhaps, uh, and maybe put back. Um, um, you you note that. Um, it seems like as you're you're looking over the scrolls at the top of the bookshelf, you know, you, you see where dust had built over on the top or built up on the top of the scrolls, but perhaps somebody pulled a, a scroll out, causing them to shift a bit. And now some of the dust resides along the side of one of the scrolls as opposed to on the top. Um, and, you know, a couple of the scrolls look as if, you know, the sides are a little bit dustier than than the tops of them are. So as if they've been shifted also. Um, yeah. Okay. Can I point his direct, like his attention to, I guess, any books that look like the ones he described that also have dust, like, like there's been moved around, I guess. To maybe help uh, him. Sure. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um, okay. So Ricard, Skodrick and Kidron. Um, so, uh, as you guys are sitting there, you know, the, the high lady, uh, expresses this to you. Um, and then she she pulls out a folded a folded parchment uh, containing a, a seal. 
Um, and you note the seal to be one of the Harpers or whatever. It's a, it's a wax seal um, that has the parchment sealed closed. And she says, um, this has some additional information in it. Um, and she, she mentions to you guys that um, she will, uh, she'll be able to get it to you uh, once she knows that you guys are going to be able to, to be on your way. Um, uh, and then she um, kind of looks at some of her other party that are sitting around and uh, she says, um, if you guys don't mind excusing us, uh, we need to discuss a couple of things just before you depart from here. And I want to, <clears throat> before she goes to get up, I want to say, uh, if I could ask a few questions, hi lady. Uh, certainly. What? Uh, specifically about these proceedings are from what I understand <clears throat> from what you've told us we're the hope is that we would be able to continue on on a mission with with possible repercussions in the future if everything goes well are we going to be able to be have our charges that we're charged with here or that I'm charged with spoken aloud before we leave and allowed to respond to them or how formal are the proceedings going to be right now? She says, um, uh, well, it, it largely depends on whether or not, um, they decide to make a public display. Um, there's, there's been quite a bit of rumor, uh, about some of the things that have gone on and, uh, some of the merchants that arrived before you, uh, but a little in question uh, about your involvement and intention. Um, unfortunately, before the death of Erwin Strawn, uh, it seems that he was able to spread a little bit of doubt into some of the minds of, uh, of those that we uh, had once trusted. Um, she says, um, uh, so before making his way um, to where he died, um, she says, uh, it, it appears he he first came to Waterdeep before word of his uh, betrayal had made it here. Um, we're, we're largely trying to convince them of his betrayal. Well, uh, we're happy to speak on that at, at length. And I kind of look over at Skadrick and Kedron. Uh, but I'm sure our word will be, un unless it's backed up, uh, will be uh, will only be worth so much. Um, do uh, we did spend a fair bit of time before we continued on to Waterdeep in the the city of Daggerford. Uh, so, if, as far as having additional voices speak about our quality of character and what our intent was and what we've done to try and help not to erase any wrong that I may have done but simply to show the the true intent behind everything everything we've been doing um, if there's any way we could when the time comes that might be a reason to, to postpone uh, a hearing is to get uh and I kind of look over at Skadrick and I'm like, what, what was the, uh, the innkeeper in Daggerford? What was her name? Uh, you mean Dragonspear? Is it Dragonspear or Daggerford? It was Dragonspear. Dragonspear? Oh, my bad. Correct. Uh, Juliana? In Dragonspear? Juliana. Yeah. And, uh, the High Lady kind of perks up. And uh, she mentioned she actually knows Juliana uh, and is uh, familiar with her uh, and says that um, she'll send word. And uh, where she feels like it may not be necessary entirely, it definitely could be helpful um, as long as they could get somebody here quickly. Um, and I mentioned to her, you know, we took out a large group of the uh, Cold of the Dragon there that were in the, the ruins outside of town and have 
kind of claim that ruined area for ourselves. Uh, in doing that, we, we did come across a fair amount of wealth that uh, we've actually tried to disperse through the city in a, in a constructive manner to help rebuild and uh, expand the city to, city to hopefully be a trade stop along the way. Uh, to uh, it, it seemed like that city had seen a lot of rough days. So, hopefully there'll be a way for me to make amends for, for my mistakes. And uh, as far as far as our word, uh, you were there too, my lady. You were there when he said it, and when he spoke to the dragon. You were you heard. We were in the right. She says. Um... Yes, absolutely. She says um, that she has started to make a case against Erwin Strawn um, in your defense um, and has started to try and adjust some of the um, misconceptions created by uh, Erwin's appearance in Waterdeep before his departure into uh, Dragon's Beer. Um, and uh, she she says that uh, that is being regarded somewhat, um, and there are just a couple of people who uh, she feels haven't quite decided that they believe it entirely. Um, and then she kind of uh, she chuckles a little bit and says, um, though the people who she's having some hard time convincing. Um, are of similar character to what Erwin was. Uh, she's like, uh, they, a couple of them are uh, quite the pain in the arse. Maybe they need to be here. <laughs> Maybe they need to be under investigation. Uh, she says uh, she says that you could very well be right in that. Um, she she mentions that there have been a couple of considerations um, by some of the uh, more secretive uh, divisions or uh, quote unquote departments uh, of the Harpers, um, and they are in talks of considering, you know who to trust, who not to trust. Um, On that note, milady, uh, if you would think it would be useful for the case at all, um, I don't know if you remember a uh, member of our party, Alduin, in one of the purple robes is wrapped the remainder of of uh, Erwin Strong's effects from his person, along with Alduin's effects, which include a, a signet ring of Tiamat, um, uh, that has a unique uh, alteration to it, and uh, along with his amulet of the gauntlet. And she... And a letter. At, at the mention of the letter, um, in combination with the signet ring, she... Again, she perks up a little bit, um, and she says, "Yes, that should be that that should be very helpful in in convincing those who uh, remain stubborn." Um, it would be with my effects with the cart, uh, everything that was in the bag of holding uh, that was uh, uh, evacuated. Um, and she she says, um, "Yes, very well. We will retrieve those items." Uh, and add them. Uh, so she says, um, uh, or she asks that you you guys forgive forgive her for the uh, discom any discomfort that you guys experience uh, during your your night's stay. Uh, unfortunately, so as to uh, maintain their their reputation or appearance or whatever, um, the council uh, has decided that you guys should actually. Uh, remain in prison for the night uh, or be placed into custody in, in a prison for the night um, and that 
the hearing is supposed to take place the next day or the day after. Uh, she says, uh, given, you know, given some of the information that you guys have provided, um, she may either be able to expedite the hearing or uh, have it staved off for a while uh, and uh, make it so that you guys can can carry out some of the tasks that they wish for you guys to carry out. Um, <clears throat> so, and then um, she she stands up and she kind of uh, gives a light bow and she says, um, uh, "Thank you for for your constant aid uh, in in what you guys have provided so far." Uh, and then asks for you guys to excuse them. Um, uh, as you turn back, one of the uh, one of the gentlemen has made his way over to the door and opened it and is standing and holding it open for you guys. Um, I'm going to bow to the high lady. Uh, as okay. I, and I look over to Ricard and I whisper, what about the alchemy shop? Should we tell her? Hmm. Hi, lady, before you go, could I speak with you quietly? Um, she, she looks and she considers and she says, um, uh, I will come to you later this evening. With haste, please. Thank you. And she kind of bows again. Now, if I um, turn it... Uh, yep. Thank you, Scanner. Okay. So, um, Roland and Atlas, so you guys are, are there. Um, Ulfni has turned to take note of the things that you've pointed out to him, Roland, and uh, make an insight check. Yeah, well, no, 11. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so as you're standing there, you, you you can kind of tell that his countenance has, has changed just a little bit, though uh, can't really tell uh, in, in what manner. Um, it, it doesn't seem to be an incredible amount of concern, um, though there is a little bit of, there is a little bit of, of something there, you know. Uh, and uh, as he's looking, he's like, now I wonder, what book says it it's specifically that I had here before that I needed to... Very strange indeed that this... I wonder who's been in my workshop. Perhaps um, I think that we should go see the High Lady. Uh, y yes, because this might present an issue depending on what who it was and perhaps what it was that was was pulled from my shop uh, and he begins to look around the rest of his shop uh just looking things over to see if uh, every seam everything seems to be in its place still or anything else seems to be um moved any or or tampered with etc cetera, etc cetera. um as you guys watch him um he he pulls out like a very interesting pair of, of spectacles uh, that you guys see. Um, as you're looking at them, uh, he, he kind of has these spectacles, right? And, and there are a couple of arms that extend out from either uh, of the uh, pieces that wrap around his ears. And in each of those little arms, there seems to be a small crystal, um, a small crystal that's cut uh cut to fit and is uh, a little thinner uh, in its profile. Um, and he begins looking around the room. And as he's looking around the room, he's flicking, uh, like he flicks one crystal down over one eye. And you see it and the crystal is like a, a green tint to it. And he looks around the room with it. And then he puts, pulls that one up and he flicks down uh, a, a different crystal in his eye. And that one has a blue tint to it. And he looks around the room again. And as, as he flicks each crystal down, he's scanning the same sections uh, of, of this basement room. Um, 
he then takes the spectacles off, kind of folds them and, and puts them into his pocket. Um, and he turns uh, and he says, um, yes, yes, yes. We need to go see the high lady right uh, at once. We need to see it once. Please uh, follow me. Come. And he hurries over to the door. Go ahead, Roland. I was just going to ask him a couple of questions. We can do this as we're walking, I guess, but I'm just, uh, one, uh, did he make any progress at all with our book that we, cause we left it with him, right? Last I checked or no. You did. You had. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to um, make any progress with that. And then if those spiders that he gave us were actually, is there any kind of uses to it that we haven't come across? <laughs> and uh, he he stops for a minute and he kind of turns around and, and looks at you with this look like, I don't necessarily have time to be discussing these things right now. Understandably, um, but I know it's and, um, you know, God knows how long. He, he says, in regards to your book, uh, he says, um, and he points at, he points at Atlas. And then he kind mm -hmm. of stands there and he, he kind of does this motion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says, um, he says, well, there was a kind of progress made not necessarily in the direction he intended. Uh, and then mm. he turns and begins hurrying again. Uh, he waits for both you and Atlas, uh, for both of you to to uh, to kind of follow him out of the uh, basement into the alleyway. Uh, and then once you guys make it into the alleyway, he shuts the door behind you. Um, and he, he pulls from... Uh, from a pouch on his side that you guys had not noticed on his side before uh, and sticks it into a gee hole in the door and kind of turns and locks the door uh, and then puts this little thing of keys back into this pouch uh, that he now, now has strapped to his waist. Uh, he then hurriedly makes his way down the alleyway towards the opening uh, and into the street and turns to head towards the front of the building. Um, so regards Godric and uh, Kidron being with you two. Um, you guys have all made your way out of the room uh, and back down. Uh, the the door having been shut behind you. Um, as you guys make your way down into the room, uh, you... As, you, as uh -huh. we're walking, can I kind of look at Skodrick and... Yeah, and, please. Uh, and uh, Kidron and, and you say, I'm Fellows, I'm sorry for uh, for anything I've done that put us in this situation. Not only has uh, this put you all at risk, but it's it slowed our progress in going after the cold of the dragon. I don't blame you for what you did. You didn't know what he was going to do to you when he raised his hand. You did the only thing you probably could have. Patience would have been a better thing, I think. But yeah. but you don't know how... <laughs> if you did have patience, you don't know what condition or if you would be here right now. We'll, we'll carry on until we can't anymore. As the dawn casters. and pat Scodrick on the back as we walk down the hallway. Um, so as you guys, you know, come out of the hallway back into the original room that you were in, um, there being, you know, the fireplace and everything that was there that you all noted, um, there, there are guardsmen now that are waiting in the room. Um, and one of them begins to to stand up and starts to approach you guys with shackles. 
uh, one of the other guardsmen stands and holds up a hand to stop him and says that uh, uh, the high lady has said that that's unnecessary. Um, and the the guardsman holding the shackles, he he kind of gets a look of surprise on his face, um, and he says, uh, uh, "Very well." And he says, uh, "If you'll please follow us." Uh, and then he makes his way to the front door. Uh, as he opens the front door, uh, you guys see um, the the young man that you guys know as Olfney Colborn uh, make his way through the front door hurriedly past the guard, uh, kind of pushing the guard out of his way as he makes his way into the into the building. Um, and um, <clears throat> one of the, the guardsmen kind of look at him, you know, uh, and, and with some distaste on his face, um, but they, they let him pass uh, and he makes his way over to uh, where the hallway is, and you guys see him disappear down the hallway. Uh, just then, Roland and Atlas are uh, following him, and uh, Roland and Atlas, as you guys begin to to make your way up the stairs to the landing where uh, the front door is, uh, and it's just like a few steps, you know, uh, you guys see this happen. You see, you know, uh, you see Ulfney pass in through the doors, uh, passing the guard, and then the guard kind of steps out uh, and holds up a hand to stop you guys to prevent you from coming into the building. Um, and uh, he says, uh, uh, your friends behind me and you are to follow us. Uh, and he says, and we will lead you to where you will be staying for the evening. And we're all there to hear that? Yes. Point Alice, he has nothing to do with this. He just joined us. And uh, he he kind of looks around to some of his other guards and um, see. I'm just going to make my wavelength on my little piece up here, just like <laughs> he's more on a probationary basis for this at the moment so technically he's not even official so I mean if that helps if that's the thing I can do with my mouth I don't know <laughs> but I would really like to just make that base <laughs> uh if if ever someone has seen an automaton make that face, <laughs> it is now. <laughs> Sweet, um, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so uh, he he kind of turns to the other guardsman, and as he's, as he's looking at the other guardsman, he kind of asks out loud, "Is this true?" Um, and some of a couple of the other guardsmen kind of shrug. Um, and, uh, one of the guardsmen, however, does kind of stand up and, and says, um, uh, well, he does seem to be, uh, uh, uh in affiliation with some sort of product of Ulfney's. He says, uh, we've, we've known Ulfney to produce things such as this before. He says, though, uh, though I've not seen any of them to have a personality, and to be able to respond the way this one does. Um, what if you were to release him into Ulfney's uh, custody? He says, um, yes, I think that's a good idea. Uh, and the other guardsmen's kind of kind of standing around and they're, they're looking and, and some of them don't quite seem to know what to do. Some of them have looks of confusion on their face and, and, Finally, one of them kind of gives a, a whatever shrug, uh, and they all kind of submit to that idea. Uh, the one guardsman walks over uh, to you, Atlas, and he says, uh, uh, yes, please come in here and wait for uh, Ulfney's return. Yeah, yeah, I'll wait on Ulfney. That's cool. Um, is anybody going to go with Ulfney to make sure he's cool, or... Uh, 
Need some protection. And they they mentioned to you that he's he's apparently going to see the high lady. They imagine, and so uh, he will likely not need protection. Okay, I just wanted to make sure, you know, with all the stuff that's going on in the city, you know how it goes. If you'd feel more comfortable, Atlas, you could stay the night here with us. Oh, that's, I, I can stay the night with you guys. I mean, yeah, I'm. it might be better that we're together. I've got all the time in the world to go see my parents again, so. This is the first time Roland's ever seen someone opt into prison. <laughs> <laughs> but it's fine. Do, 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 I mean, you, is like, it really, do you have a look on behind? your face? Did they tell you guys you're going to be behind bars, or are you going to be like in a secluded... We don't... Know. Jail. They did Jail. really elaborate, Atlas. I mean, if you feel safer here, I mean, I'm not going to contest. This is very I, interesting. I'm going to look at the guard, and I'm just going to be like, can, if I want to leave, like, in the middle, can I go? Can I leave? Or do I have to stay the whole time? Because, see, when I had sleepovers <laughs> when I was a kid... You know, they let me, like, leave when I wanted to, and I could just go back home. But I don't know if that's the thing here. What do you think? Atlas, I, I think they do. Uh, this isn't a sleepover like that, man. <laughs> this is very odd, because I feel like I'm I'm talking to a teenager, but I'm looking up at this. <laughs> Six foot seven, nation. 304 pound <laughs> machine. I'm fascinated every day. You, Atlas, I will say that. I love you guys. Um, so... And plus, I'd, I'd love to hear about what happened with Ulfney. Oh, yes. That's a story in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the guard, uh, one of the guard looks at you, the guard that had mentioned uh, talking about surrendering your custody to Ulfney, and he says, um, he says, perhaps it would be better that they not allow you to make that decision. Uh, he thinks that if you belong to Ulfney, you should probably stay with Ulfney. Um, he belongs to himself. Let's get that clear. Yeah, well, you know, I, was, I don't mean to sound like impolite or anything like that, but you might want to be careful with your words simply because, you know, it's a little uh, out there to say that, you know, that I don't own myself. And I, it's almost... Um, at worst, you're just accidentally saying it, and at best, you're just trying to get on my nerves. And so, you know, I'll willingly go with these guys. I don't want to be impolite to you. I just wanted to let you know, though. He says, um, if you don't hold your tongue, you will be going with these guys, whether you want to or not. I'm well, just going to look at the guard. I'm going to look at the guard and go, he doesn't have a tongue, and then I'm going to kind of just kind of pat pat this on his metal chest, like just. Let's stop talking for right now. <laughs> Kidron out front of the city didn't help. This isn't going to help right now, okay? Yeah, and I'm going to try and do a persuasion, DM. Okay. Uh, okay, so um, so roll a roll a persuasion check, and then uh, uh, I, I guess I, Atlas roll a uh, uh, twenty-five automatically. This would be a wisdom save. Uh, I think because we don't have will, right? This is not the five E is not a will save. Oh, right, Jesus, yeah. right, right. Yeah, it'd be wisdom. So wisdom, just flat wisdom. A oh, wisdom saving throw, yeah. All right, all yeah, right. And, and then you can choose how you. Is that like a DC or is that? No, you 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 choose. Just choose how you want to respond. Then after that. Um, Ricard, I do think you're right. I just, um, sometimes, you know, there's some stuff we need to talk about. I'm going to go with you guys anyway, but just remind me and I'll tell you some things about my past and you'll understand why I said what I said, but, uh, yeah, let's go. I didn't mean to be rude to you. I just wanted to, you know, express that I do own myself, um, but good night to you. Are, are you going to be escorting us down there? Is that a thing? <laughs> <laughs> and he, he, he looks and he's like, yes, we will be escorting you to the prison now. And uh, he, 
Can I see how angry he is with the insight check? <laughs> yeah, please go ahead. Wait, do we even need to roll inside to see how angry he is? I don't know. I just tried the eleven. There, there is a pretty there. There's a some. There's definitely some anger there. There, no, there's definitely some frustration yeah. here. Um, so some. Blink I'm just going to say as we're walking. Okay. If, if we're walking already, I'm like, yeah, uh, I'm never going to object to anyone trying to, you know, fight for their own sense of uh, autonomy freedom or anything like that <laughs> so i'm um, uh you know uh atlas I, I applaud you for standing up for yourself there it's very easy for one to lose one's uh i guess rights uh, <laughs> so to happened to me about two or three times already so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so besides there's an awful lot of shit in this room and I'm referring to the guards. I'm looking at the guards when I say that. There's an awful <laughs> lot of what in this room? Sheep. Sheep. <laughs> because they can't seem to make a decision so without looking at each guys... other. <laughs> uh, he leads you guys out into the street, and then uh, you guys make a, a right from the... Uh, from the front of the uh, building, you know, you make your way through the little courtyard there in front of the, uh, in front of the building and through the gate uh, back into the street. And then he uh, makes a right on that street. And then you guys head northward um, to uh, uh, what is thoroughly on street, thoroughly on street. Uh, and as you guys make that right, you, as you come around the corner, you see uh, there is a, a horse drawn, uh, buggy there, and this this buggy has um, uh, kind of like a uh, you know uh, what what you would see the the it's like a paddy wagon essentially, um, and uh, he he goes up to it and he puts in a key and unlocks it. Now uh, this particular one doesn't have any bars or windows; uh, it's all boarded up, um, so. Uh, essentially, it's just uh, two bench seats on either side, uh, completely boarded up with the roof overhead. Uh, and he motions and, and beckons for you guys to climb into the back of it. Uh, huh, huh, huh. Uh, DM, <laughs> can I do a, a uh, perception around the area, make sure I don't see anybody shady that we should be worried about, anything that we need to be... Uh, prepared for before yeah. we get in the back of this yeah make a perception check go for it i assume my pseudo pseudo dragon she's still with me yes okay can i do check for her as well yes absolutely okay there we go i actually did better than my pseudo dragon okay um so as you're looking around, um, this particular portion of the street, so there, there's actually quite a few guard out here, uh, and all of them are are wearing the garb of either royal guard or being guard of the Harpers, uh, as you guys note. Um, so there doesn't appear to be uh, anyone particularly shady. Um, so uh, as you guys kind of make your way, uh, you... You do hear the, you know, the various clip clopping of horse hooves, uh, kind of around you, um, and uh, you you hear one voice kind of call from behind you guys. Oh, no funny business. Uh, as Are you guys you turn, not a fan of comedy. As I'm well, just as you guys look over my shoulder, turn and look. Uh, so you see the the gentleman who called out and. Uh, as you're looking at him, it, it was the same guard that had kind of interacted with you guys a little bit before, uh, uh -huh. who had been kind of joking around or whatever. As you make eye contact with him, uh, he he kind of gives like a big wink. He's kind of like a, you know, like <laughs> like a he's like he's really not trying to hide it. It's just a blatant, blatant, blatantly obvious blink um, that he kind of makes towards you guys, um, and he says, uh. Have fun on your ride, and I hope you find it uh, a bit restful when you get to where you're going. Oh, I'm sure. We'll have to have that drink tomorrow. 
He's like, yeah, I'm playing on it. Um, so, uh, as you guys, you know, as the last of you finish climbing into the back of this cart, which I assume all of you guys do uh, without uh, any kind of putting up any kind of fight or anything like that. Um, My hands aren't cuffed right or anything. We're just going to walk right. in. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, so he he shuts the door behind you and you guys hear the click. Uh, suddenly you guys are enshrouded and in, in a bit more darkness, you know, so this is, this is, it's pretty dark. There's no light shining in through. Uh, and so it seems like this thing has been uh, sealed pretty, you know, pretty well. Um, and you feel the cart begin to jostle as you guys hear the, the clopping of hooves as you start to make your way. Um, so the cart jostles back and forth as it's traveling over the street stones, the hard wooden wheels, you know, hitting the uneven street stones, making for not quite the smoothest ride. Um, uh, and you guys are traveling for uh, for a little while. Um, uh, DM, is there anything in the back of this paddy wagon? Like anything on the ground? I assume that are any of the guards in the back of the paddy wagon with us? <clears throat> nope. None of the guards joined you in the back of the paddy wagon. It's just you guys. Um, as you, can I, you look... Uh-huh. I was just saying, can I see in here? Can, Keidra and I, can we see? Uh, I know we like, both have dark. Yeah, it's, it so like, it is... Black? No, it's not black. It's not black. So okay. it's just dim light. So anybody, gotcha. even without dark vision, it's dim light. So, so those of you with dark vision, this is just like a regular, you know, you guys can see normally. Um, Is there any like small, maybe like, you know, some pebbles that were stuck in people's shoes fell around inside of here? Is there anything, any dirt? Yes. Like so inside the bottom of the cart. There, there's like some, some straw that's been put uh, a little bit on the bottom of the cart. And you do see like a conglomeration of like dirt and pebbles and things like that. Um, so it's not very, not a very well kept. Okay. I feel. I'm just gonna uh, pick up a little bit of the dirt and okay. and a little bit of the straw and like five pebbles, you know, and just try and just kind of hide them in my clothing on my person, you know. That I type feel of thing. In, I feel in rolling in that list about what was told to us. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Okay, I'm going to make a comment on that in a second. Uh, Skadrick, uh, you're able to, without any of your, do you need like any kind of like items to create simple stuff? Like I know you created the long for me earlier. I know you need metal. Right. But as far as you're creating. Or material. Like, yeah. But like, let's say you had like broken piece of wood. And like a couple of pieces of gold, something like that. Could you fashion a dagger out of that if necessary? Just hypothetical. Is that a thing? I guess do? technically I could, yes. Okay, just need to know. Uh, all right, so you told you told the told the high lady and all the stuff we did. Now, just so I'm clear, the people that were on the council, they were in the room when you told her all this, or was it something that she was going to convey to them? Uh, I don't. I have a feeling they weren't exactly the council, but they were members yeah. of the Harper, because I think they all had the same okay. element as Ricard. But they heard everything. Yes. Everybody in the okay. room. And... Heard everything. When she, the entire when she was... When she was referring to people who were, I guess, possibly in league or the same mindset as Erwin, was she referring to anyone in the room or was she referring to people outside of the room? No, it seemed like she was referring to the people, some of the people that she was going to be conversing with. Okay. So, if, thoughts if, on that are... Well, and you got to think if, you know, knowing Waterdeep the way it is and... DM, is it okay if I kind of talk about, you know, corrupt politician type stuff in Waterdeep? Is that okay? Yeah. 
Sure. Is the you know the way Waterdeep normally is is there's always a a dark side, uh, and not just underground. There's you know so the fact that uh, you know some members of the cult of the dragon have either infiltrated or found uh, people to work in league with them is is would not be surprising uh, as we can tell by you know. I oh, know I'm Alduin not really surprised. His, his him being a member of the the uh, the um, the gauntlet the, uh, gauntlet order the gauntlet. Yeah, I'm not really surprised to not really trust anyone. Like I, I don't really trust anyone outside of this carriage at the moment, uh, or this paddy wagon. Uh, I'm just curious. They're aware now, or they will be soon be aware that we took over one of their facilities in Dragon Spear, and that we found all their money. They essentially. They, it, well, you got to think about who was there. Who was who was who was where exactly? It, what are we talking about? Showed up at in Dragon Spear at their. Uh, underground facility was uh, oh god what's his name Erwin you talking about Dean? who are we talking about not, no not Erwin Vadim Vadim yeah yeah I, I know, they, I know they he know. knows yeah I know that they know we were there I don't yeah, know if they knew we the actually so. no, no, I'm, just, I'm just saying I don't know, know I don't think it was ever we never expressed that we went inside their vault and then claims that treasure for our own. Like, if it had been the Harpers that had claimed it, they probably wouldn't do anything. But because it's our little small organization that we're just starting, I don't know how much I trust that while we're detained at the moment, that Dragon Spear is really protected, knowing that, you know, before they might have just thought there's no way we were going to find it or not going to get into it, or the yeah. townspeople had it. But they might well, send okay. someone there. I, I would like for Skadrick to at least let Juliana know that maybe put some more guards yeah. on duty or something. That would not be a bad idea and let her know that they might be getting a summons very soon and if there's any way oh, yeah. a reliable representative could go ahead and be dispatched or transported in a faster way to Waterdeep and to let us know if they do. Uh, and even right. better, just, let let the high lady know directly. Yeah, that would all be very useful. Which uh, she did. Or just let the high lady know somebody from not there. Let, well, so said, let's not let everyone know that information just yet until we can get something set up in Dragon Spear as far as protection for the town. Because I don't trust that they won't go back for that. Well, sure. Especially if it's like a stockpile for them. Well, so here's the thing. If my hope is that with the new the new path we've given the people in Dragon Spears, they'll be more apt to try and defend their city now. Uh, sure, sure. I, and but, because the fact is that yeah, yeah. No, well if the if the cult of the dragon was gonna spend the resources to send a dragon down there to blow the city away, there's nothing we can do. Right. I don't know. True. It, I mean, we can just let I, them know, yeah, and so. then yeah. I, but I agree with you. If we could let them know and and maybe speed along the process, and uh, you know, possibly get them, uh, you know, uh, I don't know that they would peel off any of the the city guard. But if there's anything that they could do, yeah, that would be nice. Well, they had plenty of city guard to waste on us. Yeah. <laughs> Water Deep doesn't usually hand out aid to random tiny towns, though. That's what people like us are for. Ah. Bureaucracy at its best. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so... What's uh, everyone thinking of our current situation? Thinking stick around, see how things go. Maybe 
disappear, go into hiding. You know, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. I'm going to see this one. Not through. too comfortable with the car situation. Okay. Yeah. I'm not going to okay, go anywhere. Do. Out of everybody, I'm the one that, as far as I know, should answer for anything. So. Hey, uh, Keaton, how you feeling? <laughs> Never mind. I already, know. I already know how you feel. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's got my back. Yeah, you should. Exactly. You know. I'd uh, ask Atlas, but it's already, like, already against. Uh, <laughs> okay, I guess we're going to ride this one out to the end. So what okay. happened with, uh, with... Oh, yeah. Yeah, that. Atlas uh, discovered some new things about himself. Uh, do you want to tell him, Atlas, or...? Yeah, um, so apparently, I'll just cut to the chase. There's a key out there somewhere in the world, um, apparently with my buyer, that forces me into servitude if they are able to use that key on my body. Um, oh, so he so that built you like a shield guardian. If that's what that is, then yeah, yeah. Holy crap, y'all. You're way more mm, complicated than a shield guardian is. Yeah. That's kind of impressive. That's a combination of mechanics and, uh, and magic. That's, that's it's very, really very cool. impressive. Yes, yes. I think we're the point that the poor boy could be <laughs> enslaved. <laughs> oh no 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 no! I get I get it. Well, there's way, ways we can fix that if we can get. I can I mean, see your erection over here, Ricardo. I mean, like... well, no no no. If we could make a key that's similarly shaped, we could put a key in there and and affix it either by mechanical means or even even magical, like you know. Uh, I was thinking, you know, sovereign it... Gle- DM. I assume I'm okay talking about arcane magical. Sure. Opponent stuff. I'm. I i do not have any sovereign glue, and but if if like if we put a key in there, we could seal it in place, and it, they'd never get it out. I was gonna. Like they would have to deactivate you. They'd have to pull you apart probably to get it out. That would. I was gonna suggest you know we create a key that is similar in shape, and then put the key in there with sovereign glue in it, and then break it. You know, break the end off the key yeah. to where they couldn't just you know pull on it or whatever, make it almost impossible. That's what I just said, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I thought you just said uh, only the sovereign glue. No, no, no. Key in there. Cut, cut off glue. Yeah, yeah. They'd never get that shit out. That's what a good idea. Me- what type of metal is so that you made st- out of? Can you want to stick something in him in this hole? I don't want never... to stick it in there necessarily. Like, it, I, it's oh, not just saying of mine. But, oh, okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's, I that's not, yeah. He's going to be putting anything into it. It's going to be me. Because I would okay. imagine, well, like removing that out, good. is it good part health. of your key mechanics, or could he even remove it? Um, as far as what Olfni said, is that you know it, it would be, it, it would be like something to slow somebody down. Essentially, if you're talking about the hole itself, he can't remove that. Okay, I don't, yeah, that's what I was. But um. You know, our solution, at least from Ulfany's point of view, isn't necessarily a permanent solution. Um, Ooh, we could trap I it. I think maybe we're just going to have to break the key. Roland, do you think you could trap it? Trap with what? Like an explosive? Uh, no, please no. Explosive, but like trap it so if yeah, you to do something in there, it, you know, I mean, you're master of doors. Wait. Do not oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, unlocking. I can unlock things. I'm trying to see. I don't really Can't make traps. I, I don't I I could try, but I'm trying to figure out what kind of trap exactly you're you're talking about. Like well, something that like, you know, trap their hand or cut their hand off or you know. How how I had to install it in his body. I mean, yeah, but I'm just trying to think about things we could do now and I mean maybe off the glue. Maybe, maybe open it could do that. I don't know. How much space does he have in his body? And do I have the materials to build something like that? You, in you've been in there more than me, so I don't know. What type of... Uh, uh, yeah, I know. 
What type of metal? To, I'm, I'm asking the DM. Is? I was asking the DM. Oh, I'm is sorry. There, Go ahead. Is there no space to fit a trap in his chest? Uh, depending on the kind of trap. So, roll um, roll an intelligence oh, check real quick. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I've definitely been inside of him long enough to know. <laughs> He's been elbow deep. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, given given your knowledge of traps and and the world that you used to kind of roll in or be a part of, it, especially you know what you grew up in and came out of, um, you know that um, traps can come in many many forms um, and can contain quite a variation of components. And given that that traps don't necessarily need a specific amount of space to be employed or, or to be implemented into something. Um, so uh, you feel like there are certain types of traps that could be constructed or even, you know, magical traps that could be magically imbued into things um, no matter how tight the space is. Um, if there is any space whatsoever that there are definitely you know there's some kind of trap you could figure out to implement into that space absolutely well uh, oh go ahead sorry i didn't mean to cut you off i was going to talk to the group but if you're still going um well i was just going to mention so so you think that in this tight of a space um specifically the kinds of traps that you could implement are you know, given the idea that there's a, a panel that has to be opened on the front of his chest in order to access the keyhole from the first place, um, you, you know specifically that there are three or four types of, of traps that you could implement just related to the opening of the panel on the front of his chest uh, okay. that would react or respond to that. And then... Um, given the space inside you could there are like two types of traps that you could implement that would not activate or go off until the panel was opened completely and then you you feel like rather than stopping the keyhole or or making it you know so that they couldn't penetrate the keyhole um if you if the keyhole was left open that there would be a couple of types of traps that you could implement that would engage uh, upon uh, or, or would initiate upon the engagement of the key itself. Okay. Uh, is it possible for me to use acid or some kind of corrosive material and put it, I guess, in the keyhole or around the keyhole so that if a key were inserted, it would just melt the fucking key. But it would, is that um, possible? I know, I know. His chance could fuck him up, but not like um, a lot. <laughs> like a, just to melt a key. <laughs> so he's kind of small. What you think is if, or or what you know in this case, um, with that idea specifically and the role that you made, um, is if someone were able to magically construct, uh a bubble of glass small enough that you could fit into the keyhole. Uh, and if they could make the bubble of glass the correct shape, that you could store acid in it so that insertion of a key at the proper amount of pressure would break the the acid, then dissolving the shape of the key. Um, but it would require someone to to be able to bake a bubble of glass small enough to put acid into to insert into the keyhole. So not in the position to do that at the moment, I don't think. Uh, is there any kind of, I mean, I'm just trying to think, like talking to the group, like what do we have on us? Do any of you guys keep anything from our, you know, I give them all my belongings except my uh, well, my shit. armor and my holy symbol. Okay, all right, Atlas. Uh, wait, Atlas, you didn't give anybody anything, did you? As far as my like, equipment, you, did you, 
Yeah, did you give the guards any? Did they even ask for your stuff? They didn't ask. I mean, I just assumed this is some sort of sleepover for me, so I kept you have on you right now. (laughs) Um. Okay. So, quite a few things. Um, Believe it or not, I've got my bedroll. So, if any of you want to be more comfortable, um, you can use that. I don't. Just wanted to throw that out there. Um, yeah. I've got some tools with me, as well as um, a magnifying glass. Um, so you remember when Ultimate was talking about those those fat candles? I've got five of those. So just in case uh, you get cold. Um, do you have a component pouch by any chance with some stuff in it? Well, um, yeah, yeah, I definitely do. Um, I have to for my spells, remember? So I'm pretty sure you gave me one. I think I did. Do you mind if I may get in there? Do you mind if I look through it? Yeah, I mean, as long as you guys aren't trying to, like, you know, escape or something. Oh, no. I don't know where you got that from. (laughs) I literally only want to protect us if somebody comes after us while we're in there. Yeah, yeah. Regardless of what any of y'all decide to do, I've got to see this through. Uh, I just I need to make a shiv. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, yeah. Okay, just need a shiv. Yeah, I mean, you can use my component pouch if you want. I've got quite a few things in there. Just, you know, keep it tidy, please. Oh, okay. Uh, everybody roll a perception check. Move. Oh, jeez. While you guys are at it. Seems about right. My first roll. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, man. Okay, so uh, Atlas, uh, Atlas, Ricard, and Roland, uh, you guys note that the cart has significantly changed speed by this point, uh, and it almost feels as if um, they're, it's making a wide turn right now. Um you guys are slowing down the the sound outside where once was uh, a conglomeration of the bustling of a city um, at night, uh, you know, accompanied by the, the travel, uh, various forms of travel, travel up and down streets passing you guys by uh, with groupings of voices uh, that has faded uh, into a, a much deeper silence. Um, and the the cart having slowed significantly, um, you guys hear uh, some some clanking. Um, there are uh, some horses neighing that you guys hear, um, and the uh, for uh, Atlas, you note that the the sound of uh, the wheels on the cobblestone streets has changed also. Uh, so you no longer hear the stone, uh, the wheels rolling over stone. Now it sounds more like uh, a grassy type uh, area. DM, from the direction we were headed and from where we are, would I know? Ex- I mean, I'm sure they're taking us to a jail, of course. But sure. would I know either by knowing the city or by knowing where we were headed? Narrow it down to where which jail they're taking us to. Could I roll something to to maybe? Yeah. Uh, uh, see what I know. See, roll Inter- an intelligence check. Intelligence check. Yeah. Okay. I do fourteen. Okay, so um, so what you feel like is uh, they've made their way northeastward. Okay. And so the jail that the that you're m- more likely in is in the uh, towards the north ward. Okay. Okie dokie. 
Uh, does Ricard look like himself right now? Like, does he look? Does he look like dejected or anything like that? Like, Ricard? just kind of like that. Um, reflective. I mean, do you, do you have a change in the room? Insight check on, check on that. I, I I could. I just I yeah. Just roll is it okay if I ask him for an insight check, D? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Damn, dude! I mean, you can, want to? If you, can, if you want to? But <laughs> you are like my kryptonite, Roland G. I'm sorry. I'm just trying to. I'm just you notice. Trying to see if you see it's you almost as if you've opened a book. And they're just reading through a description. So as you're as you're looking at, at Ricard's face, he's kind of see into your soul. He's kind of like half drawn off in thought, almost like he's looking at a map that might be on the side of the cart next to <laughs> you know across from him. But and his eyes are kind of just darting around as he's trying to. He looks like he's in mid thought of trying to figure out something visually linking together, but. Is not quite there, um, and then he kind of just sighs and and uh, doesn't really look like crushed or angry or unhappy. Just has a very resigned look on his face, like he's reasonably relaxed uh, and just uh, you know. It, kind of what he said about hoping you know that he's the one that things should fall on it seems like he just kind of accepted it and and you know how he said you know y'all can do what you want to do you kind of see that mirrored on his face like he's got to see this through regardless of what happens so he's kind of resigned to his fate and hmm. that's what you see just after he gets through with that little thought process bit that's pretty much what you see on his face so we uh throwing in the towel. Hmm. I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see what the towel looks like, and uh, <laughs> and then we'll go from there. Uh, uh, just 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 out of character. I'm pretty sure that reference is like a boxing thing. Like you're throwing yeah. in the light. so it's your towel. So like, yeah. <laughs> you would know. <laughs> But, I okay. would, but they blew it up outside the gate. See? Okay. All right. All right. Wow. So the towel was the bag full. <laughs> um, it's not like you to, uh, you know. So the... just kind of. Oh, what are you going to say to you? Sorry. Uh, sorry. You can finish your statement. I know, I'm just going to say it's not like you to just kind of, you know, go peacefully into anything honestly you, you got you seem pretty you know don't want to say abrasive but get your mind set on something you know you, you kind of just act you know you just seem to be I guess resigned to react not in a I guess affirmative way more so in a I don't want to say submissive. I can't find the right words, I guess. But you do understand what I'm saying. No, I understand. You see more that that I'm I'm more reactive instead of proactive right now. Sure. Right? Something like that. Uh, Something like that. Yeah. Well, you you got to think, Roland. I, when you met me, we were in a we were in the the den of the cult of the dragon, and that's what we've been doing almost exclusively. Is mm -hmm. watching over our back and looking over our shoulder and fighting and killing and rooting out the the evil. And truthfully, I'm I'm now to the point where, uh, you know, this is my major next step was turning in this portion of of my assignment and joining the Harpers. And I got arrested outside the gate. By the high Wait, lady. you were you were planning on leaving the Doncasters when you got here? No, you can carry individual oh, okay. affiliations, but oh, I didn't know. Being a member of the Harpers is is what my first major step was. Going to mark out the exclusivity 
bit of our contract You're, that I was writing up. And you are a member that out. of a of a thieves guild, correct? Uh, did I did I ever, uh, did I, did I, You guys no. always say this like I I I I must have been drunk. It's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I just, I just. So as you guys, uh, are saying, just like man. Godric is a is a is a cleric of his god, right? Uh, as you guys are saying that, the cart comes to a halt. Um, you you guys hear some footsteps around the side of the cart to the back, and the rattling of keys, and then the door. Uh, you hear the the click of the door latch as it opens. The door swings open. Uh, a guard standing there. Um, as you, uh, he he beckons you guys to to depart from the the, the inside of the cart there. Uh, uh, inside of the pack. I look over at Roland and and Atlas, and I go, I get top bunk. <laughs> <laughs> we all have bunks. I don't. I mean, most of the time I, I just sleep on the floor. I don't. Um, so uh, he, as you guys begin to step out of the back of the paddy wagon, uh, you you look into what appears to be a uh, a courtyard of sorts with high walls surrounding it, um, uh, guards patrolling on the the tops of each of these walls. Um, there are. Uh, and as you're looking, it doesn't seem to be exclusively the courtyard of a prison or, or jail. Uh, there seems to be a couple of other things that are going on here. Um, Do I, I recognize guys... where we're at by any chance? DM, maybe a history check? Um, or You perception? can, though. The, yeah, you can make a perception roll to see okay. if any of the insides of the walls appear to be uh, or appear to resemble. Uh... Yeah. So there is a particular <laughs> prison in the North ward that, you know, um, as you, you look, looking around the insides of the walls, uh, they, they highly resemble the outsides of the walls. Um, and this particular courtyard is not exclusively uh, a prison, but is attached to um, some, uh, some other uh, buildings that uh, that are utilized for uh, some political uh, functions, as well as like like there's one portion of of the building that's utilized for for political functions or gatherings, or um, if royalty wants to meet there um, to to address some of the issues concerning the prison itself. Um, there there's an attachment of prison here uh that is specifically for people who or are either awaiting hearings or um people who uh people who politicians have a particular interest in and okay. want to keep separate from other prisons um do i know like what's cross street we're at just just so I have a mental image of where we're at in the city. Uh, got you. Okay. Um, so uh, what you believe is that this particular building uh, is going to reside. Da, 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 da. Let me look through the stuff here. If that's something you want to get to later, DM, that's that's fine. Uh, I've got it. Yeah, I'll. In I'll case if it comes up, if it comes up. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know here in a little bit. Um, okay. 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 So, um, so there, you know, you guys see in the courtyard there there are a couple of guards who appear to be more out of boredom than than uh out of necessity who appear to be training in their their sword combat a little bit um there are a couple of other uh guards in the area that are kind of patrolling back and forth and then there's one guard sitting next to a door um as you guys exit uh out of the back of the paddy wagon the the guard sitting next to the door which um is is a rather large uh wooden door you know held together with iron bands uh 
he he stands up and he opens the door. Uh, as he opens the door, you guys peer down into uh, some steps leading down into a dark corridor uh, that you see flickering light coming from within. Um, and the guards kind of lead you uh, down into this corridor. Um, so you guys begin to make your way uh, through this corridor, which the, this particular prison is not the largest of prisons. Um, it's a fairly small one, but uh, does have a decent number of rooms in spite of it being such. Um, so you guys make your way through, uh, and he he goes down this, leads you down this one particular corridor and makes a right, uh, leading you down uh, another corridor. As you passing through, you you begin to see you know bars of jail jail cells, uh, m- most of them being empty. Um, the ones that aren't empty, uh, given the how late it is in the evening at this point, uh, any any of the jail cells that are not empty have someone who is sleeping in them. Um, these particular jail cells are fairly large, um, and you do note that each of the jail cells has one small round table with one chair uh, in them. Uh, you you guys see like uh, you you note that there's a bucket. Um, you see on the table, each table is uh, decorated with a, a single plate with a set of uh, uh, dinnerware uh, and uh, one wooden goblet. Um, and so as you're as you're looking at this, you know, it's it's noted to be a little bit nicer than some of the rough rough prisons that you guys know of. Uh, and uh, Atlas, you would also know this as well. Um, and so Atlas, you would also also kind of have an understanding of, uh, this particular prison. Um, (laughs) as you guys are walking through, um, so, um, you, you begin to approach the, the end of this corridor and this corridor comes to a dead end. Um, and there are uh, six cells, three on the right, three on the left, uh, and he approaches the middle of the left three and slides the door open. Um, he he looks at you guys and, men, and and says to you that he doesn't feel there's any necessity to separate each of you um, and that you can all share the same cell um, and kind of motions for you guys to enter into the cell. Um, as you guys... Uh, are, are moving into the cell, uh, you hear a voice uh, coming from the cell next to you. Uh, and uh, uh, each of you make a perception check again, uh, just to see. Um, so it is dim lighted here. You know, it's fairly, it's a fairly dark corridor. There are a couple of torches here and there held on wall sconches or whatever, uh, lit flickering light. Uh, shining through. Uh, so Atlas, you look over and you note that, uh, and actually Skodrick, you do the same. Uh, look over and note that you, you, you see the face of a dragonborn uh, sticking through the cell just beyond yours, through the bars of the cell just beyond yours. Um, and you, everybody hears his voice though. And he's like, you guys you know, he's really cutting into uh, my jail here. Um, I don't know if my tavern is going to survive. Uh, it, it, and then the, the guard turns to him and is like, Oh, shot it. You've only been here for two nights. And uh, he he kind of says, uh, Yes, yes, but that's besides the point. Um, the, the guard turns and... and says to you guys um just just ignore that one he he's not uh, he's fairly unimportant um as you guys make your way into the cell he kind of closes the cell door behind you latching it closed um and uh you you hear the voice again uh now that you've entered into the cell, you can no longer see his face sticking to the bars, but but you still hear his voice, and, and he says to the guard, um, Look, I, I can see terrible things in your future. 
least that's what my brother would tell you, I'm sure. I'm certain. I'm absolutely certain. And the guard just kind of yells back, whatever. And uh, then makes his way away. Uh, so you're standing in your cell. You note that your cell also has the one small table with chair in it. Um, it has the one wooden goblet, and it's set with one plate and some some dinnerware. Uh, it is uh, pretty heavily padded, though, with uh, straw uh, uh, that's strewn across the floor. Um, as you step on it, you know you're it's it's pretty soft. Go ahead, roll it. So we all heard his voice, right? Yes. Okay. I heard what he said. Yes. I'm gonna lean over to Skodrick and be like, "Does anything he said sound familiar to you? Where are you from?" He says, um, yeah, what is, "Where I was living is out in Elkirel. I've got a tavern there. I've made my way to Waterdeep to acquire some more." Uh, particular uh, uh, things that I need for my tavern. I was told of a particular trade that I can make. And he says, um, uh, uh, unfortunately, some things went awry, and I wasn't able to make the purchase that I needed to make, and I've gotten thrown into this place. You said you had a brother? What was his name? Uh, yes, my brother is Fraud Hall Nimtus. Uh, I am Sparrow I... Nimtus. I was going to say, uh, Scott, was that the uh, nod. Lovely gentleman. Oh, you're just going to nod for a friend's sentence? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I no, is that, the, to say. <laughs> is that the gentleman that uh, told us uh, fortunes? You said uh, your brother could tell us fortunes. How accurate are they? Oh, they are very accurate. He, Inside. His fortunes, absolutely. <laughs> Inside? <laughs> Yeah, you're going to make inside checks. I mean, I'm just going to believe him. Just, <laughs> just, you're in a current situation. I'm just like, you know what, whatever. <laughs> mm, look at you guys. <laughs> so there seems to be, um, for those of you that have rolled inside checks, there definitely seems to be some some sarcasm there. Uh so he he is definitely being sarcastic, um, though you kind of get the feeling that perhaps uh, perhaps some of the sarcasm could be a product uh, a product of some spitefulness that he he feels towards his brother. Um, though the the level of sincerity that he has uh, is questionable. Just gonna ask Scodrick, uh, do you recall what he said exactly? A vague idea about someone needing someone around. I remember Just, what uh, he told me. What did, what, did he, what did he say, if you don't mind sharing? He said, uh, You're gonna need, you are gonna need me before it's over. Me? Me personally? Yep. Okay, I mean, I'm, Help me out before I oh, you with the bow. Ah, there, there we go. There we go. The bow. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, making the it. bow. Yeah. That's what it was. It had to be that. Um, couldn't be anything else. Uh, out of mm -hmm. character. Who was there? Uh, I guess during the whole possession removal thing. I know Kedron was doing some stuff. I can't recall the exact order of events. Let's see. Um, back what's the name? It's about the paladin. No, 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 no. I'm just saying. I'm trying to figure. Out. I know he helped, but I know I thought uh, Kedron was doing something. Kedron was definitely there. Okay, I didn't know. Um, he wasn't actually, assisting with anything, but my notes are everywhere. <laughs> okay, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's fine. It's Courtesy just... five minute warning before twelve. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll just don't worry about it right now. Uh, okay, Skadrick. Uh, so, uh, anything 
you feel like any kind of inspiration to, to, to help me out now out of this situation or no? No? Okay. We're going to see. It's fine. It's fine. So I'm going to go, Atlas, can I look through that uh, uh, component pouch? Just to see yeah, yeah. a couple of things there. Yeah, what do you need exactly? Like, uh, specifically, uh, Ricardo, are you whispering that to him, or are you just saying that? Yes, out loud? yes, yes. Trying to be, trying to be quiet. About All right, it. roll a stealth check real quick. Huh? Mm. Okay. <clears throat> uh, and I want to look. Uh, so I'm looking for um, uh, a piece of gum Arabic with an eyelash inside of it. Uh, and possibly uh, like a, a feather or a piece of down. And let's see. Five thousand gold. His hands just still there. It's like wow. Okay. Uh, I want to look around. Is there? Uh, yeah, okay, I don't need that. I'm gonna kind of like from my clothing. I'm gonna pull like a piece of string out and just kind of put that. Yeah, uh, you know, wrap that up in my in my shirt, kind of tuck it up in my armor to where I've where I've kept all the other little bits of stuff I've grabbed. Okay. Um. And uh, let's see. Uh, uh. Oh, that's not probably gonna be in there. Uh, um. Oh, this could be really. It was Festival and Is there a piece of leather in there, just like a little piece of cured leather. I can pull some off my clothing for you. Well, in the materials pouch. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see in a moment. Okay. <laughs> that, right. That's that's it. That's what I'm looking for. Um, I feel like this is going to be a good place to pause for the evening for those of us that need to get off. Um, so if you don't mind, Ricard, could you send me that list real quick? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. I can just click the spells that they're linked to if you would like me to, if that sure. would be easier. Yeah, yeah that'll add it, that'll it, add in it into the Yeah. Okay. So add it to the chat so I can uh, reference. Uh, this should be hey, Uh DM, just just so I'm clear. You said the table there's a table in the cell that we're in? Yes. Uh, it's one small round uh, table with three legs. Alarm. Was you said there was like cups and plates and stuff on there? Or there is was a it... single single plate with a single go. wooden goblet, um, no with utensils. some dinnerware. There is there are utensils. Oh okay. I'm just gonna swipe those real quick. <laughs> Stealing the utensils. No, 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 I have a, a purpose for using them, not just taking them because they're there. You know, just. You sure you aren't taking them because of their? No, no, no. It's it's like a fork and a knife and spoon, right? Something like that. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Plastic. I'm like, look, there's your shit. There you go. They uh, this with shit. Made of made think... of wood. <laughs> uh, is, is there a guard out there, like watching us? Not actively watching you, but there is a guard that is uh, roaming up and down the corridors. Okay. <laughs> I know, I know we're about to stop. I just wanted to, I, I, I can wait till next session. I just didn't want to forget. I just wanted to ask. Oh, boy. Could, 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 given, given, Roland, given Roland's history, could he fashion a lockpick out of any of these items? Are they metal? No, they are not metal. They're wood? Yes. Okay. Could I fashion a lockpick out of any of these? You can try. Or, or would I just, would I know offhand, like, hey, this isn't going to work because it would just snap. Uh, make an intelligence check. <sighs> Jesus, with the intelligence checks. There, there it is. is. There, there it is. is. <laughs> right at the end. <laughs> yes. You think it's possible, oh. but you're not sure of the durability. Gotcha. Gotcha. Can, um, do I see him gathering up this stuff? Like yes. in character. Do it. Roland, what are you going to do <laughs> with the wooden <laughs> utensils, man? Hey man, I'm in I'm in jail again. You know, has, it's been a while. It has been a while. You gonna uh, stab somebody with a spoon, really? 
No, 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 not <laughs> really, really. You want me to start calling you Richard again? Do you want that? I'm just. I don't think, I, I don't think anyone wants that. I'm just trying to work. It's not, it's not, it's, it's not like insult this. my intelligence. I, I was, I'm trying, given our situation, to, if we need it, form means of escape. You know, I might have to pick a lock or two. Perhaps. Can I roll an intelligence check on picking a lock with any of the stuff he's just picked up? You can, yes. Okay. And I'm not, you know, saying this is going to work for sure. Just <laughs> it's the only thing I see in the room at the moment. Mm. Oh, my. You think maybe <clears throat> you feel <throat> perhaps the durability would be questionable? <laughs> I, I really, I think that might break. Maybe, maybe I, I'm, we try it as a last resort. How about that? Yeah, I mean, this is mainly just a desperation. This is a plan like C or or F, if you want to say. If you want well, to push it down. The list. Of, um, copper wire for one of my spells. As I whisper, yeah. are you just you just you just have everything on you? Like you have. Hey, I guess he just didn't turn anything in. I don't know Do how they a let on him you? in here. He's a Do you have a dagger on He's you right now? Do you have your javelin still? I mean, Holy <laughs> shit! <laughs> you have what? They honestly, I just think you know maybe they thought I was trustworthy or something. <laughs> I mean, you know we're what? passed I, out. I'm not gonna you do, do have, you have that air about you. I think I think everyone just maybe they thought the land was a problem. Or... I don't know. I mean, if anything, I could just make a lance out of something that's on my body. So what are they gonna do? You know? Sure. <laughs> uh, do you have a dagger on you, sir? Uh, let me rummage through some. All right, yeah. All so right. Uh, let's uh, let's end the session. So here. Yeah. <laughs> Questions that should have been asked twenty Listen, minutes ago. We'll just end the session with everybody asking at notes for all the things that are on. Right. This <laughs> yeah. It's like these guards are terrible. <laughs> like. <laughs> I feel like I was profiled because I had <laughs> got all, all these questions in this. While they're time, asking gonna... all this stuff off my person, I'm going to try to cast Green Flame Blade for just a quick moment. Does it work? Oh, um, God. Does the spell work? Like, technically speaking, could I cast oh, Does it work? Yeah, it works. Oh, okay. We'll find out next time. <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I'm curious to ask why you thought it wouldn't work, but <laughs> being a, I don't know. Right. I mean, if okay. our and so out of character, if our cell was an anti magic zone, it might not work, right? Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But they also didn't check in for weapons, so I don't think they planned yeah. that far ahead. Or, anyway, it's just Dude, to... we're so cool with them. <laughs> Is this what it's like to try to prison like superheroes like in the Marvel universe? Where they just like pretty much can't do anything. <laughs> oh, they won't do anything. They come back and the whole side of the building is blown out because <laughs> I, th right. I can't remember who it was. One I think it was I don't know if it was Hawkeye or Bullseye. One of them went to jail and then killed like a bunch of guards with like something really small. Like it was, it was, it was a, a bit, it's a bit eye, absurd. I think. Yeah, that sounds like bullseye. bullseye. That sounds yeah. like John Wick with a pencil. <laughs> sure. All right. It's a fucking pencil. Going in here. <laughs> All right. Cool. Thanks everyone um, for showing up. <laughs> yeah, appreciate oh, yeah. all you guys for jumping in. Anybody that jumped in, uh, hope you enjoyed our stream. Please, you know, like and subscribe. Uh, follow us. Um, and uh, if you have any comments or critical criticism, we will openly accept both. Uh, I mean, I'll listen to it, but I don't accept it. <laughs> I'm not going to be open about it. I'm just going to, you know, kind of give you like a tsundere, like, I'm going to be very whatever kind of thing. You, know, you are. Gonna... <laughs> All right. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. 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 Uh...